It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So in this video, we're going to be checking out the Gamma K LK67, which is a RGB hot swappable Bluetooth 65% programmable triple mode wired Bluetooth keyboard. And there's a lot more in that description, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, I want to say thank you to Banggood for providing this board for me to review. Uh, so Banggood reached out and said, was there anything that I wanted to check out? And as usual, I went to the community and said, what do you want me to ask them for? And they had actually asked me for two things, which was some Fika Panda switches and this LK67. So Banggood actually sent them both to me in the same package. Now, the previous week's video, uh, you would have seen me check out the Fika switches. And so this is that same package. But before we get onto the desktop and checking out the actual keyboard, uh, let's have a look at the actual listing to see what we are expecting. Right, so here it is. It is that very long typical description on Banggood. You can see it's currently $60 US, normally $65. Uh, and for Australia at least, thankfully we got some free shipping going on if you were interested. Comes in a white and black. Uh, it's got a rotary encoder here, 65%, so there's a couple of extra switches, your arrow keys, and a pretty straightforward kind of layout. So some nice fancy renders by the looks of it. Uh, some other people who've already checked it out. So, yeah, got a battery, triple mode connection, typical kind of text here. So you'll get a kit, which is the PCB mounting plate, plastic case stabilizer, a type C cable, and then a receiver. So it's already seemingly pre-programmed as volume with a play pause button on it. So that's cool. Uh, has some side lighting, which looks cool. 4.8 degrees, pretty close to a standard five degree that we see in a lot of board designs. Uh, I have no idea what that even means. I think that's trying to say NKRO, all keys without conflict. <laughs> Might keep that up for quick reference later. Okay, so there does seem to be some software driving, but if you've been around on the channel, you know that I typically don't go into doing uh, looking at that. I look mostly at the actual form and how it feels and flex and sound because I'm not an RGB type of person. So, you know, you're going to have to go and check out some of the other videos probably if they're going to be poking at the software. Um, I will be checking out its connectivity using my daughter's tablet because my desktop doesn't actually have Bluetooth on it. I recently switched hardware and I didn't realize because my brother helped me with this new box that I'm running off that the motherboard actually doesn't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi on it. Good stuff. Uh, so it's got a decent rating. There's a couple of different stars all the way down to a one star here as well. So that's what we should be seeing. Uh, and where's the hot keys reference? There we go. I'll keep that on the page. Right. Here it is. So this is the package that I cut open the other week to get out the, the Fika Pandas, which is what I will be using to put in here uh, to basically test what that sounds like. Uh, keycaps, I'm going to have to go and grab some keycaps and put them on as well. But that means uh, I will be splitting this video into those relative components. Okay, so let's just get this out of the plastic. I literally did not take it out of the bag from between the Fika video and now. So this is my first impression of it. It did get a bit damaged. Uh, you can see how badly that got crushed because they had stuck this box on top of it inside the bag. Uh, so I am hoping the internals uh, are well protected, but it's a nice looking box. It's typical gamer, I suppose. Um, I think what they're trying to say here with the special satellite axis is that it's an MX switch support. Um, so there's just a model detail there. Separate keypad. Uh, well, it's not really 
I think they mean the arrows. Independent volume knob and nothing on this side. So let's get rid of that and slide out this poor box that's been beat. Uh, well, I had a, uh, an SKU sticker here. 23rd of September is uh, the sticker there. 23rd of September. So it's actually uh, hasn't been sitting around on a shelf for very long. Okay. Dum dum dum. Whoa. Not much protection on the top at all. Uh, absolutely nothing. And you can see it did get a bit of movement there. Uh, there's a, a card with some details in it. Okay, English, backlighting, backlight rem recording mode. That's cool. I'm assuming that's going to have the cable in it, which, yeah. Is there a receiver? Ooh. We got a, a puller, switch puller, and a keycap puller. On a, oh, yes, oh, oh, it does. It, they really did provide a Bluetooth receiver. Hey, cool. That's really cool. I like that. The cable's uh, pretty straightforward. It's not, you know, fancy or gold plate or anything, but seems like a reasonable quality there. So that can go back in because I'm not going to be using that. Uh, all right out of the bag and so there it is there's there it is in black focus focus doesn't want to focus because the glare on how shiny that is is uh really helping to to not let it focus so there's the knob with a bit of a like a color ring. Ugh. Camera, why you do this to me? Okay. So there's a kind of like a color ring on it. It has stops. You can feel it. So it's not uh, stepless. It's got steps in it. And yeah, you can, you can really hear that. It's quite a distinctive click there. You got some LED indicators there. You got caps lock. Uh... I have no idea what that is. It's it's like a like a camera. What is that? And then I mean that's caps lock. It must be Windows gaming lock or something like that. And oh, that's the recording mode. That's the macro or lighting recording mode. Okay. So it's interesting that they've actually got this this silicon fill here, this gray bit here that I'm peeling up. That must allow you that allows you to get the wire out that's actually really cool because it's plate mount right so you can see the stabilizer wire there underneath the plate that shiny bar and this uh, allows you to pop in and pop out those stabilizers that's actually really cool I like that and I can see it's actually got a layer of foam as well underneath the plate oh that's cool that's cool Okay, so I'm going to bung that back in. Yeehaw. That fits in pretty well. Uh, let's have a look at the stabilizers, how they are. Well, they stay up, so it means there's lube. Yep, I can definitely see lube on this one there. You can see it right there. There's a, a big glob of lube. So they've got that lubed in. Yep, that one's lubed, that one's lubed, and that one's lubed. Cool bananas. All right, so there's the side panel that's going to let some light out. There's the other one. It's got slots for light to come out the back. There's the actual data plate. There's no... Okay, so we've got a switch back here. So in the middle, it's USB 
and then Wi-Fi on one side and then Bluetooth on the other side. So this receiver I think must be a wireless receiver rather than um, a Bluetooth. So I might still need the tablet, my daughter's tablet with Bluetooth capability. Okay, so let's just keep that on the side. Let's go with wired first. Um, I'm just going to pull out one switch so that I can actually test that uh, for the purposes of the fact that it's actually going to work. Okay. I can actually see the battery underneath there. There's this little yellow bit there, and that's like the captain tape. You can see the captain tape on the actual battery underneath it. Okay, so we're just going to carefully, carefully insert. Please go in. No? Yes? Oh. Why does that feel like it doesn't want to go in? There we go. All right, hopefully that didn't bend the pins. Any? <laughs> ah. Okay. Oh, I'm getting too excited here. Flex test. My usual flex test. Look, it's a plastic shell. Um, you shouldn't be surprised that it's flexing. It's not too bad, to be honest. The metal plate is actually quite firm. Like, it is metal. It is flexing, but it's not creaking, which is nice, compared to some other plastic uh, keyboards that I've, you know, flexed. <laughs> uh, though, if you try to spudge it, that'll be quite challenging because the seams are actually really tight on this. Um, yeah, so if you're going to have to change the battery out, I would say that... I don't know. Yeah, you'd probably need a proper actual kit to get into there because the seams are actually quite tight. Alright, enough dilly dallying. I know people want to see the RGB ness. Um, or something like that. Come on. These Velcro things are too effective. Okay. So it's a good length cable, pretty typical. Quality seems alright. Like I said, the braid's okay. Let's plug that end in. Oh. Magic USBs. And there it is on the left hand side. Whoa! Ah, oh, yeah. That is, that is stunningly bright. Stunningly bright with no, like my wife just walked in and she just literally leant back because it is is that bright. Um, I want to turn off my, my overhead and like that's with that's with no switches in it so it's going to be excessive. And if I turn off the room light you can see it is excessively bright. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, um, I might need to insert a couple of extra switches to, to turn the lighting or change it, but uh, function modes. I need function delete, function page up, up, down, left, right. Well, that was uh, undesirable. Yep. How many did I lose? Well, I guess I'll find out when they turn up in places. All right, so uh, make sure these pins are straight. So control and function. Okay, and then first one is going to be function down, which is going to be to reduce brightness because I like my eyes.
It's not getting any less. Yeah, it is. It's off. Okay. <laughs> Let's go with uh, function up. <clears throat> All right, so that's the lowest. Uh, delete is the backlit mode. So what's their default? Delete is up the top here. Okay, so there we go. We're getting a, a scroll pattern. Oh, okay, that's off, but the back is glowing. Check that out. All right, so function delete. Oh, that was like an explosion mode. Okay, so that was that's like running across the bottom there. Okay, so there's a random star pattern things, snaking. I don't know what's happening there. Right, so it's like ripples. Waveform, another classic. Oh. It's pulsing and shining and changing. All right, so that's like explosive from the center. It's cascading, bouncing up and down. There's a lot of modes. Okay, there's your, your standard gaming, WASD kind of mode. Just solid color. Single color pulsing. Changing. Waves that are going side to side. Explosion from per key. And I think we're back to the start. Yep, we are. Okay, cool. Uh, and then, of course, page down should turn it on, turn it off. Uh, page down, page up. So if I put in page up, page down. Boop. All right, so that's page up, which should be ambient on both sides. All right, let's just change the mode to something that's full. Okay. I don't know if it's doing anything. Keypad. Maybe the software is designed for a full-size board that actually has a numpad. All right, so page down. It's off. Oh, bliss. Okay, so we've just tested the lights. The lights are working. Um, the lights, the lights are working. Cool. Uh, okay, so we want to just open up like a, like a notepad. Let's just drag notepad over. And then, of course, it should. There's no reason why it shouldn't work, but we're just going to switch the monitor and. Oh. And my letter G works. Uh, yeah, my letter G <laughs> works because that's all I've put in. Uh, all right, I'm going to just put in a H. I mean, the hot swap capability here is fantastic because, you know, I'm just straight up sticking switches in and it's good to go right let's go back to the desktop okay so we'll kill that we don't need to save it no don't save okay um, <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna unjack the USB-C that's really tight and I'm gonna put in um, the Bluetooth so Q function Q is gonna be Bluetooth 1 so we'll, we'll be able to pair it. Uh, long press three seconds to enter pairing mode is what we want. Um, all right. Yeah, and then the Wi-Fi receiver. So 
you'll see I've got a little USB extender here. Um, so we'll give that a bell as well in a moment. Uh, this packet is openable from the top. Of course, I'm trusting that this device is not going to load some malicious code onto my computer, but you know what? That's that's the risk you run. It looks very similar to like, you know, a Logitech wireless receiver that I have for my, my mouse at work. So I'm just going to shove that in. My USB has detected something. Uh, the USB has not popped up with anything else. So, so that's interesting. Uh, so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to flick it over to USB mode. Okay, so we've got that light is green on USB mode. I didn't even look at what the light was doing before. And we'll go back to a notepad. We'll go to the right monitor. Back to the notepad and G and H. Voila! Wow, that was that was really painless. So that was nice. Pretty cool. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so we'll kill off the notepad. New do it save. Back to the desktop. We'll take that out because I don't need to leave that in. Receiver works. Easy test. <clears throat> All right. So now we're going to go to my daughter's tablet for school. All right. So here we go. Connected devices. Pair a new device. We're going to go to Bluetooth, and we're going to go function Q for three seconds. Uh, I mean, it's already got BT5 keyboard, BT3 keyboard. So let's just go with the top one. Uh, Kinsu? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right, so that's paired, and I honestly don't even. Let's just go up to here to the Google bar. All right, is it doing any? There, there we go. All right, so it's a little bit delayed, but <laughs> you should see all these results coming up from the letter G and H. All right, so I've just put in the backspace key. G, 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 H, 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 H. That was actually really, really easy. So if we go back to Bluetooth mode, we go to this and we disconnect that and we forget that. Forget device. Right, now let's try pairing a new device. And now uh, we're going to put in W for the second device there you go so it's come up again like, I know that you're not really seeing this um, oh, it's because it's coming up with Bluetooth 3.0 and 5.0 that's what the protocol sorry I, I wasn't thinking about why there was a 3 and a 5 um, so that's cool so we won't pair with that and then we'll go with E which is the third device Bunk. And that's, uh, well, we've got to pair it to forget it. We'll, we'll pair it. Cancel that. All right, so let's go and disconnect and forget you. Forget. All right, so now we're going to go and pair a new device again. And function three. One, two, three. Did it find you? It did not find you. Let's try again. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand. There you go. Okay, so we found it. All right, so let's go to Bluetooth 
5.0. Now, I didn't even try the volume dial previously on uh, wireless, but we'll see if it's actually, look at that. It's moving up and down. So that's cool. That's cool indeed. All right. Okay. Cool bananas. So I'm actually really happy with that. That was quite painless. And the Wi-Fi usage there was also very, very straightforward. Sweet. All right. Uh, how do I go to app switching? Okay, you can go, you can go, and then Bluetooth off, and tablet off, power off. Right, okay, so that will go back into the drawer in a moment, as long as it's turned off. All right, so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to end the video now um, and then I will proceed to put the rest of the switches in. I'll put some keycaps on it and then I can do a bit of typing on that uh, and so you can have an idea of what it sounds like and the impressions from me on actually typing with this keyboard. So we'll be back after the short splice. Okay, so um, we're back. So I've put in the Fika switches. Uh, so that was a 70 pack there. 67 plus two plus one. That's actually gone into my switch collection there. Uh, and what I've done is I've put on the uh, PBT Cherry Profile uh, Future Funk inspired set <clears throat> that I previously reviewed that was also a little bit controversial in the community because it's a inspired set. It's a clone, it's a copy, right? You know what? They exist, personal opinions, whatever, you decide on what you wanna do or not do or support or not support. Um, so the thing is, before I go into the sound, into the sound testing kind of stuff, right? Uh, your board is not going to sound like this if you don't have exactly the same things. So putting in the Fika switches with these PBT Cherry Profile and my microphone setup, this is only give you this will only give you an idea relative to this setup, right? And I feel I need to make that distinction quite clear uh, so that you know people aren't going to have a certain impression of that it's going to sound like that or doesn't sound like that if they get themselves and put different switches in different keycaps because your ears also won't be sounding the same as what my microphone picks up and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so uh, I've got monkey type up on the other screen, which I'll put over. I've set it to a one minute and I'll drop the microphone over the top of that and you can hear what that sounds like and then go through all of that. But uh, let's just, will it put some light on? Did I? Uh, switch the backlit mode on off. Do I? Do I have lights? What have I done? It is in. No. Yeah, okay. Why, why, why is my... Is there no lights at all? What have I done to the lights? Aziz, lights. Unless, of course... Oh, there we go. We got some lights. There we go. Right. Um, you know what? I should have just restored default settings. So Control Alt Q will restore the settings. There we go. Default settings. Now we have a light show. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, I am sure that my, yep, my volume is, it, you can't see it, but it's happening, it's there, it is working. And, and I don't have anything to play pause. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go to monkey type. We're going to switch on the right hand screen. We've got it set to 60. I'm going to drop the microphone down now. that sound 98 words per minute 90 percent 98 percent accuracy uh, that's pretty on par to what i kind of would expect <laughs> that i might normally do pretty pretty similar all right and then of course uh for you know i don't know i mean you can definitely i can see the sound is spiking on the recording there but for me you know there's no ping and it is actually quite a nice sound there for the space bar, but I just had this crazy thought, right? So what I'm going to do is that silicon, I want to take the silicon out. I want to take it out so that I can hear what it sounds like. Now you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm, I'm actually using a switch puller to uh, take that space bar off <laughs> because I didn't want to take off the other keys. Don't do it unless, you know, you're willing to destroy your keycaps. Uh, but because these are clone keycaps, whatever, right? Who cares? Um, and then, of course, I've got to undo this, uh, this hot swap. And then I can take out the little silicon. So just to, of course, you know, show you what's going on here is that is coming out. And then that is also coming out. And then we can put that back in. Okay, uh, probably shouldn't have been on the camera software there. There we go. All right. We're back. And then back over to this side. And then the space bar. You know, it actually sounds deeper to me. It actually sounds deeper. Yeah, don't don't do this at home.
So you can fit them back in without having to pull the switch out, but you're not going to get it out without getting one end of it. Well, yeah, definitely don't do that at home because I've gone and uh, I've actually taken the, uh, the die sub off. This is really interesting, isn't it? The die sub actually came off on these. Look at that. It actually, it was barely deep at all. That's cool. Yeah. Take those rubber things out if you want a deeper sound. Um, cool. Cool bananas. Cool bananas. All right, so let's wrap it up there because obviously, you know, there'll be only about 2% of people who will have watched this video all the way through to the end. Uh, how does it feel? How does it type? It's comfortable. I like it. The angle is, is fine. It's familiar. It's very similar to my Philco. Having the Fika switches in it, it, it sounds really lovely with the Fika switches and these Cherry Profile PBTs. Um, ignoring the color scheme on it, it's not really relevant. Uh, you know, the response is, is fine. Once I've actually got the keycaps on it, it's not blinding me with the RGB, but you know, for me, I'd probably still turn it off anyway, um, or you know, have it much lower in terms of color, since I'm not really an RGB type of person. As for the volume thing, it's not really a big deal for me because I don't change my volume very much. I would rather be able to cycle it for some other use, but if the software can do that, then that might be helpful for you. Um, but overall, I think for $60 US, it's actually a really neat little package. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by how it feels and how it packs. Like, it's, it's really solid. Like, there is flex, don't get me wrong, but like, I'm pushing quite firm on that to get it. And just in my, you know, 100, well, 98 word per minute typing there, you can't, you can't feel it at all. And, you know, I bottom out quite firmly, but there is no real flex to that. Now, whether you like it hard or not, you know, is obviously up to you. But for me, that's actually quite comfortable to type. Okay, I'm going to end it there. Um, rating wise, I'd say a solid eight, maybe probably pushing even close to an eight and a half. This is probably one of the better keyboards that I've actually reviewed in a really long time. And I would actually consider using this on a regular basis. Um, if I'm looking for something that's a little bit on the smaller form factor compared to uh, a full size keyboard. So I probably wouldn't at the moment for home use only because of the kids. Um, my youngest is only 12 months now and very grabby and still drooling and spitting everywhere so getting it on something like this is probably not advisable uh, but you know if it was just my daughter around then i would trust her enough because of her age that she's not going to go and do anything or spill on this and whatnot and i'm just looking down the corridor to make sure that she's actually not getting out of bed which she's already done twice um while i'm filming this so <laughs> kids what can you do um that's it. That's it. So if you do like it, you can check it out yourself with the link in the video description below. Uh, if this is the first time that you've come to this channel and you want to help support this channel and you like this kind of stuff, then of course, please hit that like button. Maybe you hate this kind of stuff. I don't know. I talk too long. Hit the dislike button. I don't care. The engagement helps me regardless. Either way, subscribe, bell button, you know, the usual drill, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, thank you again for checking out this video and of course, as usual, until next time, <laughs> happy clacking.